Someone pays your school fees, takes care of you, sends a million naira to you, and after two days, you reply with a one word text thanks. Hmm. He pays another one, thanks, and it never comes again. Let me tell you, it was not a spirit. Spirits take advantage of our disobedience and ride upon it to help us lock those doors. I'm saying this to you because there are many of you today who have uncles and have people who in a heartbeat can open doors, but you are surprised why they will not attend to you. And you keep hearing that they are lifting others. It is dishonor that has closed that door. You keep having dreams and visions of yourself moving forward and excelling in life, yet it never manifests because the conduit, the human conduit who should partner with God for your lifting, you have dishonored and closed that door. Welcome to Kingdom Mirrors TV. On this channel, we post edifying content for your spirit and daily living. Kindly like, comment, subscribe, and turn on your post notification to get notified each time we post. Thank you, stay blessed, and enjoy this video. Key number one, the first key that activates this grace, this mysterious grace called favor in the life of individuals, the life of businesses, companies, politicians, businessmen, ministers of the gospel, churches, it doesn't matter who. It's a principle that works for any, everybody. Are you ready? Key number one, honor. The first key that controls favor is honor. Please write it down. Honor is the key to access. Anytime a door closes before you and refuses to open, I can tell you the name of the padlock that was used to lock that door is called dishonor. Let's define honor very quickly. What is honor? Honor is the discerning please write it down honor is the discerning comma honor is the celebrating and honor is the rewarding of men for their distinctive difference the discerning the rewarding or the celebrating and the rewarding of men for their distinctive difference their uniqueness is called honor. So real honor starts with discernment. All men are equal in Christ. The same Lord is rich unto us. But as far as the discipline of purpose, the sacrifice of destiny is concerned, all men are not the same. You must have the fortitude to recognize and to discern the difference. In the example I gave you earlier on, what, what, what do you think is the difference between the senior advocate and the young man who was about to start his law practice? I will tell you the difference. The difference is years of investing to build credibility. The difference is years and pain, years of mistake. And the price that that senior advocate had to pay to learn. When you honor men, listen to me, it's not human worship. There is human worship which is wrong. But I can tell you this, great men are not great by mistake. They are testaments of endurance. We live in a world that has mastered the art of trivializing people. You see a wealthy man, you begin to curse him and say, wicked Nigerians, all of you just destroying our money. Yet that man was born and he slept under a bridge one day. You see a man of God who is anointed and blessed and God is showing him mercy. And you may say, I don't mind all these people. God just gave them grace and they are acting as if. Listen, Africa, we must learn this. Nigeria, we must learn this. The church, we must learn this. We are equal in Christ. But the men and women you see who are the gatekeepers today, many of these men, if they tell you their stories, you will end up in tears. Testaments of endurance. I was returning back from Lagos and um, the pilot that 
flew us to return. Um, when they were introducing the man, they said this is an award-winning so, 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 and so, and so, one of the best and the finest in the industry. And when they said that, we're happy. When we lifted all through the flight and when we landed, even me, I clapped. I said, that man, truly, he deserves every accolade. You can see the difference. You can see the intelligence and the professionalism. Now, for someone, you say, oh, well, pilots are pilots. Until the other version of this excellence flies you. <laughs> Are we together now? Yes, sir. God's grace, absolutely phenomenal people, custodians of wisdom, people who you enter their office and you see awards from one end to the other as if they are selling it, and every single one was earned, and yet they sit down very humbly. Now, a wise person will quickly drop any man of God thing and say, sir, within these five minutes, these awards are not a showcase. Let me tell you what most Nigerians will do. Is it just because you are lucky? What is award? <laughs> Let me tell you what an award is. Award is a testament that you have paid the price and your world, even though selfish, they've been compelled to recognize it. Are we learning? Don't be offended. I'm a bit harsh. I'm pushing you for a reason. Oh, no. The discerning, the celebrating, and the rewarding of men for their distinctive difference. You hear me say this is a house of honor. It is for a reason. Seated here, the overflows and following online are thousands and eventually will evolve to millions of people. Some of these people are absolutely phenomenal people. Some of the people you may be sitting close to today, by the protocol of their profession, you may not even have the access to sit close to them. Is that true? Many preachers have closed the door of favor because of dishonor. In as much as you are anointed, remember you are captain only within your jurisdiction. Are we learning? Everybody say honor. honor. Honor is one of the mysteries that when you engage it will bring you favor almost immediately. You keep insulting your boss. This man is a stupid man. As stupid as you think he is, he, every year he's turning over in billions and he's paying your salary without fail. Yet you call him stupid. Every one of us under the sound of my voice, I pray that God will grant you grace to have a renewed orientation today. You can literally earn a living practicing honor. That when people say, what are you doing? You say, I'm in real estate. What are you doing? I work with oil, an oil and gas firm. What are you doing? I practice honor. It's only a fool who will laugh at you. You can literally earn a living practicing honor. Honor is a stream of income. A stream of income that does not need capital to start. And yet it is marvelously fail-proof. Hmm. Are we blessed? Honor. Oh, you must discern. Never enter the presence of greatness and act as if you are not aware of it. No, no. As much as God continues to lift me when I step into the presence of great people, I'm not talking of human worship. No, that is wrong. But to give people an impression that, look, I am aware of your sacrifices. I am aware of all of these great things. One of the clearest expressions of honor is gratitude. Ingratitude is a display of dishonor. Someone pays your school fees, takes care of you, sends a million naira to you, and after two days, you reply with a one-word text, thanks. Hmm. He pays another one, thanks, and it never comes again. Let me tell you, it was not a spirit. Spirits take advantage of our disobedience and ride upon it to help us lock those doors. I'm saying this to you because there are many of you today who have uncles and have people who in a heartbeat 
can open doors but you are surprised why they will not attend to you and you keep hearing that they are lifting orders it is dishonor that has closed that door you keep having dreams and visions of yourself moving forward and excelling in life yet it never manifests because the conduit the human conduit who should partner with god for your lifting you have dishonored and closed that door let me challenge you here tomorrow is monday work continues why don't you take it as a challenge and find something maybe a bottle of wine or something go and meet your boss if you have access to him and just just greet him and just tell him look um I just came to say thank you sir thank you so much it's been five years working with you or working with this company and I have experienced phenomenal growth I have learned I have grown and this is just me coming I went to church and I was taught the value of honor and I want to be a practitioner of the word I just want to say thank you let me tell you what your boss will do all right all right leave leave usually but there is no man who has vaccination against honor nobody there is nobody on earth who can resist honor people will express it in different ways the person looks at you and on that table he's deciding the next set of executives there was one more gap left and he just sought his next executive your certificate will give you a job but honor will guide your promotion there is a realm you get to where everybody has the same qualification with you the distinguishing factor becomes the practice of these mysteries that's what gives you an edge are we together please say honor practice honor practice honor the cheapest way to practice honor is thanksgiving discern and say thank you there are many men who never tell their wives thank you i don't mean to offend you but it's true thank you for what i paid her dowry there are many women who never tell their husbands thank you what for the bible says mm -mm, mm -mm. there are many children who never tell their parents thank you i didn't ask them to give birth to me see all those kinds of thinkings thank you learn it please don't just laugh learn it don't say thanks no it's a mediocre way of expressing honor don't send people a text and say there are many people who have done well just to let you know you are one of them no when it has to do with communication of honor you give people a sense of exclusivity you are that valuable to me Honor is the discerning, the celebrating, and the rewarding. There are people, for instance, who have shown me honor in my life, and by the honor they have shown subconsciously, I have become indebted to them. I'm not saying do it, but I'm just telling you there are people who went that far. Look at Nicodemus. You now know that even though they were not born again, they were wise people. He came to Jesus by night. He didn't say, sit down. I am a Pharisee. Let's talk. He said, Rabbi. He never called him Jesus. Rabbi. We know that thou art a man sent from God. Forget everything we said in the afternoon. We know. It's just our job that makes us do that. We know that thou art a man sent from God. Then he now says, no man can do these things except god be with him and jesus said you won my heart let's talk verily verily i say unto you he didn't even ask jesus a question jesus started talking read your bible he had not asked a question yet you're jesus verily verily i say unto you except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom of god then he now said can a man enter he expressed so much ignorance and he said look jesus this, this is intelligence and jesus said let me now explain except a man be born of water and of the spirit he shall not enter the kingdom of god and then the wind blew it where it listed jesus began another lecture same thing with the woman at the well have you noticed that honor is magnetic it keeps people within your vicinity it keeps helpers within your vicinity is the job of the Holy Ghost to send them to you is your job to work in partnership with him to maintain them 
Never step into the door of greatness and allow that door shut you out. No. Honor is what keeps the door open so that your children and your children's children can pass through. There are people today when they endorse you, even if you have an enemy who does not like you, they are compelled to bless you because of the power of their sacrifice invested in their signature. Let me challenge, let me challenge, let me challenge the young people in our nation and tell you why many people don't have doors. They come to you, usually once you are blessed, you have this plethora of relatives who are waiting, angrily entitled, believing that you owe them, and then people just come in, uncle, how are you? And they just bounce around, and they are seeing people queuing. Your uncle is their CEO, and they are respecting the person, and you just bounce in and come in, how are you? And um, uncle, anything for the boys. And he looks at you and just manages it, gives you something, and tells his PA, any day you see this boy coming, make sure you don't open the door again. Why? Because you communicated dishonor. <clears throat> I shared with you, okay, I'm not sure I've shared it here in Abuja, a very true story. I went for a conference years ago and a man of God shared that story. Let me use it to wrap up this subject of honor so we'll move to the next point. True story. This man was seated. He was a pastor of a church and God was using him mightily, true story. But back at home, things were not working well, especially financially. Things were a bit rough. And yet he would sit down and the wife would sit down and they would hear testimonies of marvelous things that God was doing. Changing the lives of people and people would clap. But that man sat down there and there was fire on the mountain in his own house. One time during a service like this, the wife just got up and walked out of the meeting. The man was done, finished his counseling, and ran back home. My wife, what happened? Did I offend you? Did I say something during the message? She didn't say anything. And then he sat at table to eat, and he noticed that the plates that she was using to serve him, you know those women have those holy of holies <laughs> plates that only come out when there's a triumphant entry. So <laughs> that... <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now, watch this. She brought those plates and served him, and he kept asking, what happened? Did I offend you? We can talk about this. She didn't say anything. Finally, when she brought the last item, kept it on the table, she got down on her knees, and she said, servant of God, my home is in trouble. Suddenly, the man said the same anointing he used to feel in the church came upon him on that dining table and he laid hands, not now, not on the wife, that grace. Do you know? Because every time he was at home, he was a husband. So the anointing for priesthood did not find expression to bring breakthrough. The woman was now wise and saying, you are my husband, but you are also a man of God. Today is not my husband I'm feeding. I'm tired of feeding my husband and receiving compassion. I need results. So let me, let me honor that guy. Let me tell you this. Listen, everybody you see is multidimensional. The dimension you honor is a dimension that delivers to you. Your father can be a prophet and he can be blessing the nations and never see anything for your life. Your CEO can have a powerful signature that has decided the prosperity of institutions and yet you can be seated there and no door opens. He that receives a prophet in the name as touching the office of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. There are many men of God who don't even waste their time praying for certain people because they know by the Spirit that they are not going to receive anything. The courage of pride that they bring. I'm not talking about kneeling down. You can kneel down and still be standing up in your heart. So I'm not talking of all those things. No. A settled recognition. Practice this. 
and watch doors open for you. Practice honor. Go back. Some of you this night, even though your parents may look aged, they may not have money, but they have grace. Mama, just to say thank you. Thank you for the honor and the privilege. Every time something is about to happen to me, you see it in your dream. I don't trivialize that grace. And they'll just say, my daughter, the God who helped me in my youth help you carelessly, and that will be it. Doors will begin to open for you at a frequency you may not explain. I am a benefactor of this. I know what I'm saying. Many of you have heard my story years ago when we went to preach. I went to preach in Ekiti State. And we flew through Ilorin and then went by road to Ekiti State. And strangely, I started seeing the obituaries of people. And I saw that these people were in their hundreds. 120 something I said what is this we got to a small community and I saw 132 years old someone who had just died 132 and yet abroad they are busy saying 118 is the oldest man they should come to Nigeria when I saw that I knew that this is no longer luck there must be a grace within this territory I returned from the ministration and Whilst we're passing there, I stopped at that community. Please pay attention. And the people could not, there, there was nobody who was speaking English there. They were speaking Yoruba. And I said, please, they should lead us to the oldest man within that place. That I just want to honor him and just have him pray for us. So finally, we got someone who could speak limited English. And they took us to one of the, I think he's a man of God, one of the elders. And when I went there, I stood with my dear people and I was talking and then they would interpret. Oh, we are men of God. We just came to respect you and honor you just so that you can pray for us. The man laughed. He said, kneel down. He didn't say, you are a man of God. You are an apostle. Kneel down. <laughs> I got down on my knees with joy and with speed. When that man began to pray, he was praying in Yoruba. True story. I felt like a crown was just put on my head whilst he was praying. When he was done, brought out a seed, gave him. And then when we were going to return to the car to continue the journey, um, I now went to thank some of the women who were gathered that I was greeting. Did you know that I, I, I greeted initially to lead me to that man? When I went there, they now told me that this one 32-year-old man who died, that the woman standing there was his wife. Ah, I said, let's go back. The Bible says two shall become one. Even so, the, the man is dead, but he's still alive in her. She, she was like 100 and something, oh, standing like that. No stick, no nothing. Ah, what sort of a grace is this? And I said, please, they should tell her that she has to pray for me before I go. Do you know what happened? The woman tapped me and said, follow me. We entered a room. I didn't care where I was going. I, I said, when we entered the room, listen. She started showing me pictures. That was the wife of his youth. It was not Keturah in old age. The wife of his youth. And you know people those days, they could marry 17, 18. The wife of his youth. She showed me the picture until maybe about a year or two before he died. And then I said, please, they should tell her. I don't know whether I'll call her my grandmother now, great-grandmother. I said, please pray. When I said so, she said, kneel down. She removed both of her shoes and stepped her feet. I'm showing you the power of honor. She stepped her feet, her bare feet on the ground and began to pray and prophesy and prophesy and prophesy for over 15 minutes. When she was done, I honored her. I entered the car smiling. I ran straight to Zaria and I told my people, I said, stand up, oh, I've come with some things. <laughs> Please sit down. He says, such as I have. Yes, sir. You can know you have a grace. Oh, no. There are people today who got lands that they never had to pay for. They honored their way into ownership. There are house helps today who have been given inheritance worth millions and billions 
because the children were too irresponsible to be trusted with that kind of thing. Oh no. Once you're seated in one minute, please just lay your hand on your head and declare, Lord, the capacity for honor I receive. I run away from this honor outside, inside, following online our Zaria family. Please pray. I obtain grace. It's time for my life to change. Please pray. Oh, my lifting has come. Oh, oh.